A U.S. Army review of the chaotic U.S. exit from Afghanistan last summer was obtained by the Washington Post this past week. In the review, the commander on the ground during the operation reported that the military would have been, quote, much better prepared to conduct a more orderly evacuation, quote, if policymakers had paid attention to the indicators of what was happening on the ground, unquote. A few days ago, NBC News asked President Biden about the accounts in these documents. It interviewed many military officials and officers who said the administration ignored the handwriting on the wall. Uh, another described trying to get folks in the embassy ready to evacuate, encountering uh, you know, people who are in, essentially in denial of, of this situation. Does any of that ring true to you? No. No. That's not what I was told. That's not what I was told, the president said. Not what he was told. The documents go into detail about how in the views of the service members on the ground, the U.S. ambassador and others in the Biden administration did not see the security threat for what it really was and did not adequately prepare for withdrawal, that there was a lack of urgency in the White House's National Security Council. The day Kabul fell to the Taliban, U.S. troops are described as going room to room at the embassy, pushing State Department personnel to prepare, but some were, quote, intoxicated and cowering in rooms, and others were, quote, operating like it was day-to-day -day operations with absolutely no sense of urgency or recognition of the situation, unquote. Now, President Biden's denial of this reflects the same attitude seen in a Biden administration official, quote, about that allegation to the Washington Post, quote, were there any truth to it, we presumably would not be learning of it six months after the fact, unquote. Yeah, that, that's not how it works. Bad information not flowing upward that's a long-standing tradition. Almost 10 years ago, as then-President Obama prepared to try to leave Afghanistan, I asked him this question suggested by a soldier friend. Do you feel that the reporting you receive from the Pentagon fully represents what the on-ground commanders assess? Is there any disconnect between what leaders feel the public and president want to hear versus what is actually occurring on the ground? One of the things that I emphasize whenever I'm talking to John Allen or the Joint Chiefs or any uh, of uh, the officers uh, who are in Afghanistan is uh, I can't afford uh, a whitewash. I can't afford not getting the very best information in order to make good decisions. I think the reports we get uh, are relatively accurate in the sense that there is real improvement we know now the degree to which so many of these reports were whitewashes, so optimistic as to have been false. The thing is, President Biden knew this then. Biden has been a skeptic of the war in Afghanistan for years precisely because he did not buy into the rosy scenarios from Foggy Bottom and from the Pentagon. Are you rejecting the conclusions or the, the accounts that are in this army report? Yes, I am. So they're not, not true? I'm rejecting them. It's difficult to overstate how insulting Biden's sweeping rejection is to so many service members and veterans, given the full content of the 2,000 pages of documents in this U.S. Army investigation, which CNN has also obtained. Many accounts are from troops who were on the ground at the gates near the canal around the airport. Non-commissioned officers, junior officers, Joes, people with little political motivation to lie and heavy legal and moral obligation to tell the truth in sworn statements. People like the men and women that Biden visited with last November at Fort Bragg. It's amazing to me is how proud I am to be your commander in chief. You are the most incredible group of women and men, warriors that we've ever seen. People in that North Carolina crowd served with Staff Sergeant Ryan Canas a special operations soldier stationed at Fort Bragg before deploying to Kabul. Testimonies about what happened are, are a big chunk of the report. And one details Kanasa's final moments. He was one of 13 American service members killed during the Abbey Gate suicide bombing in August. Though the name and rank are, are redacted from the record, it's clear the service member giving the testimony knew Staff Sergeant Kanas. He describes the chaos at the scene, the the crowds of Afghans pushing and shoving their way into Abbey Gate. He tells of being knocked to the ground by the explosion of the suicide bomber, 
getting up and dragging his unconscious, but, but still breathing teammate, Staff Sergeant Knoss, away from further danger, trying to keep him from choking on his swollen tongue. He loads Knoss into the bed of a truck. He clears his weapon and tucks it beside his teammate, and the truck drives away. You do so much, and your families give so much. I really mean it from the bottom of my heart. And so I just, we came because we wanted to thank you, tell you how much we care. I don't doubt President Biden cares, but I do not understand why he would not manifest that care into taking this investigation more seriously, absorbing the tragic details, contemplating the obvious failures of his administration, failures that cost lives. Now, Biden always bristles at this because he feels confident that ending the war in Afghanistan was the right decision. But that's not the question at hand. It's not whether, but how the war ended. And what that means to the people who were there when it did finally end. No part of these military interviews ring true because that's not what I was told. If this was not what you were told, then what was? And don't you have an obligation, sir, to be told? Don't you have an obligation to Ryan Canas's family? to his grieving mother. They were sitting ducks. How do I feel? I feel grief and I feel anger. I am angry for the waste of life. Isn't that how you demonstrate how much you care? Otherwise, isn't it just words?